Welcome to the Great Detectives of Old Time Radio. From Boise, Idaho, this is your host, Adam Graham. If you have a comment, send it to me, box13 at greatdetectives.net. Follow us on Twitter at Radio Detectives and become one of our friends on Facebook, facebook.com slash radiodetectives. Well, before we do get started, I do want to encourage you, if you've not already, to pick up your copy of An Ounce of Prevention. It was my very first detective story with a little bit of a sci-fi element mixed in. And it's available as an audiobook or as an ebook. Uh, you can view all of my available books and ebooks at store.greatdetectives.net. Uh, well, now it's time for today's episode of Nick Carter. We do have three weeks worth of lost episodes. Uh, so today's program actually comes from May the 9th, 1948. And the title is The Case of the Nameless Blonde. A small old Dutch cleanser, famous for chasing dirt, presents Nick Carter, famous for chasing crime. Every week at this time, two great names are joined as new post-war old Dutch cleanser brings you one of the most resourceful and daring characters in all detective fiction, Nick Carter, Master Detective. Nick, if only he'd come. He's ten minutes late now. I want to see him just as much as you do, Patsy. I sure hope he can tell us what we want to know. Well, Twelve hours on this case, and we don't even know the victim's name. That's true, Patsy. <laughs> Great Scott! Nick, is he... did they... Yes, Patsy, they did. He'll never tell us anything now. He's dead. Now, the case of the nameless blonde... Today's exciting adventure starring Lon Clark as Nick Carter, brought to you by new post-war old Dutch cleanser. As our story opens, Nick has just returned to his office from lunch. Finding no one in the reception room, he makes his way back to the laboratory, where Patsy Bowen greets him. Oh, Nick, you have a visitor in your office. Oh, I have? She came right after you left, a very attractive blonde. That's nice. Who is she? <laughs> she wouldn't give me her name. Okay, let's see what she wants. Well, Nick... Why, she isn't here. Nick, look. Behind your desk. Great Scott. She must have fainted. Let's have a look. Why, this woman hasn't fainted, Patsy. She's dead. And that's the story on your mysterious blonde, Nick. Medical examiner finished his autopsy about ten minutes ago. So her death wasn't from natural causes. Not with that much poison in it. Huh. We don't even know who she was. There was nothing on her to identify her. Well, I let the newspaper photographers take her picture. The edition should be on the streets by now. Have you seen them? Now, Patsy's out getting the papers now. Uh-huh. Well, somebody may be able to identify her. I'll let you know if anything develops. I'm back, Nick. Okay, Maddie. Thanks for calling. All right. Her picture's on the front page of all the papers, Nick. Let me see. What'd the sergeant have to say? Just that our nameless blonde was poisoned. Poison? Yeah, she was fed arsenic three hours before she died. But, but Nick, I thought arsenic resulted in violent death. Well, she looked more as if she'd suffered a heart attack. Oh, well, sometimes it acts this way. Well, then she just came in here and toppled over without uttering a sound? Mm-hmm. That's why you didn't hear her. Oh. Well, I guess I'd better straighten up this office. The sergeant's men certainly made a mess of your death. You'd think they... Nick. Yeah, what is it? These aren't your keys, are they? Well, let me see. No, I never saw them before. Then they must belong to that woman. She was sitting here before she died, and... Well, look here. Oh, what is it? There's a name printed here on the case the keys are in. Oh? It's almost worn off, well, but can I... can you make it out, Nick? Just Simon Grenander. Simon Grenander? Yeah. Well, that's an odd name. Is that all it says? Yeah, just the name. Hand me the city directory, will you? Yeah. Thanks. Here. Come on, let's see what we can find now we are G. Grimly. Grim. Mm -hmm. Grendel. Well, there's no Grenander at all. Oh, then we. Oh, I'll get it. Okay. Nick Carter speaking. Uh, Nick, this is Maddie again. Yeah? We got a nibble on that picture in the paper. You mean somebody identified her? No, but a cab driver just came into my office. He 
He says he recognizes her as a fairy picked up downtown yesterday. Good. He took her out on Lafayette Road. Lafayette Road? Yeah. Well, that's a pretty swank neighborhood. <laughs> I'll say. Now, the street number was 1720. 1720? Yeah, I'm on my way out there now. Patsy and I'll meet you there. 20 minutes. <laughs> Okay, Maddie. Hello, Sergeant. Oh, hi, Patsy. Well, this is the place, Nick. I thought I'd wait for you two before I did any investigating. Oh. Gee, the house is completely dark. Yeah, don't look like anyone's home. Not the friendliest place I've ever seen. Uh-uh. Ring the bell, will you, Maddie? Right. There is oh. no use trying to get in. Uh, what the... Stand right where you are. Don't try anything because I have a gun. Hey, look, who are you? Who are you? And what are you doing trespassing on private property? We happen to be the police, mister. The police? Yeah. Yeah, now who are you? I'm the caretaker. My name is Weber. Nobody home here? No. There's no one living in the house now. Hasn't been since the funeral. Funeral? Whose funeral? Mr. Stokes. He died just last week. He lived here alone. Do you mean Marvin Stokes of Stokes and Whitaker, the big real estate company? That's right, miss. Oh. Were you here all day yesterday, Weber? Sure. I'm here all the time, day and night. And maybe you can tell us the name of the visitor you had yesterday. Uh, visitor? Yes. I, uh, I did not have any visitors yesterday. Look, we know a woman came to this house in a taxi cab late last evening. Now, who was she? You're crazy. No woman came here. The cab driver says he let her out here and she walked up the steps before he drove off. That is not so. Who's Simon Gonander? Simon Gonander? I've never heard of anyone by that name. All right. You have the authority to let us in this house? No, I cannot do that. You would have to see Mr. Stokes' partner, Mr. Whitaker. He is the only one who could let you in. Why Mr. Whitaker? Because he is in charge of this property now. Okay. Guess that means we drop in on Mr. Whitaker. Well, you go ahead, Nick. I gotta get back to headquarters. See you later then, Matty. Okay. Come on, Patsy. <laughs> Mr. Carter, you can get into the Stokes home any time you want to. Thanks, Mr. Whitaker. However, I doubt that it will throw any light on this mysterious woman you've been telling me about. Well, why do you say that, Mr. Whitaker? Because, Miss Bowen, it's hard for me to believe that Marvin Stokes had any dealings with a woman. Oh? He and I were partners for 20 years, Mr. Carter. And in all that time, he had no interest in women at all. In fact, he was woman shy. It was an obsession with him. Well, this gets screwier and screwier, Nick. The only thing we're sure of about that woman is that she went to Stokes' house. Well... And now we find that she had no reason to go there and that nobody saw when she got there. Oh, by the way, Mr. Whitaker, does the name of Grenander mean anything to you? Simon Grenander? Mm, no. No, I've never heard the name before, to the best of my rec... Excuse me. Hello? This is Sergeant Matheson of Homicide. Is Nick Carter there? Yes, yeah, just a moment. For you, Mr. Carter. Thanks. Hello? Nick, Matty, we got another bite on that newspaper picture. Oh? Huh? A guy named McIntyre just called to say he thinks he can identify the dame. Say his name's McIntyre? Yeah, Captain Ernest McIntyre. I'm meeting him at the morgue in 20 minutes. Okay, Matty. We'll get over there right away. Oh, what the devil's keeping that guy? He's 15 minutes late already. Oh, take it easy, Sergeant. He'll be here. Oh. Hey, Matty, you have any idea who this Captain McIntyre is? No, he just said he was a retired sea captain. I asked him if... What's that? Holy smoke, those were shots. They're right outside. Yeah, come on. Right. Now, look, there's oh. a man lying there. He's been shot. Yeah. Killer must be in that car that just pulled away, Nick. Yeah, it's the only way he could get out of here so fast. Yeah. Well, whoever blasted this guy did a good job. He's dead. Nick. Do you think this is Captain McIntyre? Wait till I see whether there's any identification on him. Yeah. Hey, what's that, Nick? Billfold. Find anything in it? Yeah, he's Captain McIntyre, all right. Oh. Well, how do you like that for a lousy break? Well, now we know somebody's determined to keep us from identifying that woman. So determined, in fact, they'll even commit murder to do it. <laughs> And so, once again, Nick is frustrated at his desire to learn the identity of the nameless blonde. We'll see what happens next in just a minute.
And now, back to the case of the nameless blonde. Today's adventure with Nick Carter, brought to you by new post-war old Dutch cleanser. As we pick up our story, two hours have passed since the death of Captain McIntyre, the man who promised to identify the mysterious woman Nick found murdered in his office. Now in the bright moonlight, Nick, Patsy, and Sergeant Matheson approach a small waterfront shanty. The next shack down the beach should be the one where McIntyre lived. Yeah, what do you expect to find in the captain's shanty, Nick? Well, there's just a chance, Matty, that McIntyre had something in his possession that'll tell us what he himself would have told us if he'd lived. Huh? Like what the dead woman's name was and who poisoned her? Yeah, the key to her death must be her name. Uh-huh. Otherwise, why would somebody be so darned anxious to keep us from learning what it was? Well, that makes sense, but... Uh-oh. That's McIntyre's shack over there. There's somebody in it, Nick. Yes. The lights are on. It looks as though somebody's moving around inside. Come on, we got to hurry. Yeah. Hey, the lights went out. Oh, better watch it. We'd make swell targets in this moonlight. Hey. Get down, Patsy. Hug the sand. Whoever's in that shack spotted us. And doesn't want us to spot him. Uh, he's staying in the shadows, Nick. He must have gone around behind the shack. I'm going at Now hold it, Matty. What? I have a feeling those shots were meant to cover a getaway. There's no use trying to catch him now. Yeah. Yeah, I guess you're right, Nick. Well... Aren't we going to take a look in that shack? You bet we are. Watch your step, Patsy. I'm okay. Okay. Careful now. I'm going to open the door. Keep your gun ready, Matty. Uh, don't worry. Oh, it's open. Uh-oh. Gee, it's dark in here. Can you find a light? Maybe there's a switch by the door. Here. Yeah, here we are. Oh, boy, look at this place. Looks like a cyclone hit it. I expected something like this. Yeah. If we're right in thinking that McIntyre was killed to stop him from telling us who the woman was, then the murderer was pretty sure to have the same idea we had. Certainly. Nick. He'd come here to look for evidence that might help us to identify her. Then it was probably the murderer who took that pot shot at us. Could be. Nick, yeah. there's someone on the porch. Okay, you guys, what's going on here? Take it easy, brother. This thing in my hand ain't no water pistol. Who are you? The police. Police, huh? Yeah. Well, what's the idea of tearing a joint apart? What's that to you? It so happens I bunk here, copper. Thought this was Captain McIntyre's shack. It is. Him and me, we live here together. I was Mac's first mate before he quit shipping out. What's your name? Gunther. Al Gunther. Uh huh. Well, you better start looking for a new roommate, Gunther. Captain McIntyre's dead. Dead? Of course, you wouldn't know anything about that. No, I wouldn't. Or about the woman he was going to identify when he was murdered. You mean somebody bumped Mac off? That's right. Well, I'll be done. But, say, you don't seem exactly broken up about it. What do you want me to do, sister? Bust out and cry? We all gotta die sometime. Well, I... Gunther, you ever hear of a man named Simon Grenander? Simon Grenander? Why, uh... Well, it looks like he has, Nick. Uh, no. Uh, no, 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 I ain't. It don't mean nothing to me. What do you do for a living now, Gunther? Me? Who else? I'm working on a private yacht. It's owned by a guy named Whitaker. Whit Whitaker? Yeah. What's wrong with that? Not a thing. Good. Anybody got any objections if I fill my pipe? Not at all. Go right ahead. Thank you. Very expensive humidor you keep your tobacco in. It ain't mine. It's Max. May I see it a minute, Gunther? I can't stop you, can I? Well, now. What is it, Nick? There's a very interesting inscription on the lid of this humidor. Yeah, what's it say, Nick? June 1938. To Captain Ernest McIntyre with deepest gratitude. From Marvin Stokes. <laughs> You say we can get in the Stokes house this time, Nick? Yes, Betty. I called Whitaker's home. His sister Elizabeth said she'd meet us there and let us in. Well, what do you think that'll get you, Nick? Oh, look, Patsy. Two people have been murdered. And the only link between them is that somehow they were connected with Marvin Stokes. I know, but... One thing, I hope I can find something in Stokes' personal papers to tell us what kind of favor Captain McIntyre did for him ten years ago. Yeah, and maybe we can find out why the woman who died in your office went to his house after he was dead. Yeah, I hope so. The answers to those questions should tell us who the woman was and why she was murdered. Do you find anything of interest in Mr. Stokes' correspondence, Mr. Carter? No, not yet, Miss Whitaker. Oh. But they're not even halfway through yet. Where did the sergeant go, Nick? 
Oh, out to find Weber. Said he was going to okay, see... Okay, okay, Weber. Get in there. Yes, yes. And it sounds as though he found him. Well, I finally got the truth out of this guy, Nick. He was lying, all right. He was? Yeah. The dame who died in your office was here in this house. Okay, who was she, Weber? I don't know her name. She did not tell me. Then why did you lie about her being here? I... I had orders not to let anybody in. She gave me $20 to forget them and... Well, and you I... took the bribe and then were afraid to admit it. Yeah. I was afraid Mr. Whitaker would fire me. Nick, look what I found. Hmm? Uh, let's see. Well, well. What is it, Dick? Recognize the woman in this photograph, Matty? Do I... Re... Holy smoke! It's the blonde that died in your office. And listen to what's written on the bottom. To Marvin from Marjorie, with all my love, always. Oh, no. No. Miss Whitaker, what's the matter? No. You know this woman? No. No one ever saw her before. Oh, Nick, she looks like she's on the same. Oh. Sit down here, Miss Whitaker. Hey, what's eating her anyway? You better tell us the truth, Miss Whitaker. I don't want to talk about it. You say you never saw this woman before, and yet a picture of her almost makes you faint. Why? Oh, well, because she... Oh, I always suspected there was another woman. That's why Marvin wouldn't marry me. What? Yes, I love Marvin Stokes. I loved him for years, but there was something standing between us. Now I know it was Miss Marjorie. And it also gives you a pretty good motive for poisoning her, Miss Whittaker. Poisoning her? Yeah. Well, that's absurd. I never laid eyes on her. Well, how could there be a woman in Stokes' life that neither you nor your brother knew anything about? Well, there's only one answer to that, Mr. Carter. He must have met her the year he spent abroad. Abroad? What year was that? He went to Europe in the summer of 1938. Well, now, this is beginning to add up. Hey, Patsy, give me the Stokes papers for 1938. Uh-huh. 47, 44, 40. Yep. 1938. Thanks. Here they are, Nick. Now, let's see. March. April. May. June. Hey. What's this? Hmm? What did you find, Nick? Cablegram sent to Stokes. Signed by Alphonse de Graz. Manager of the Hotel Louis Cut. That's the hotel where Marvin always stayed when he was in Paris. Well, what's it say, Nick? Congratulations. Reservations changed as requested. And it's addressed to Stokes on the SS Simon Grenander. S- Simon Grenander? Hey, Nick, that's the name that's on the dead woman's key case. Well, I'll be darned. It's not a man at all. It's a ship. Oh, brother, now this oh. case is more balled up than ever. Not at all, Maddie, not at all. What? Huh? I'd say it's beginning to clear up quite nicely. <laughs> Nick, if you really know who the murderer is, why the dickens don't we go get him instead of sitting around the office waiting? We're waiting for Maddie to track down the proof. Meaning the log of the S.S. Simon Grenander? Yeah. He's going to call us from the harbor master's office. But what do you expect to find in the log? Oh, look, Patsy, we know that ten years ago in 1938, a ship's captain named McIntyre performed some sort of service for Martin Stokes. Something that Stokes was grateful for, right? Yes, but... We also know that Stokes met a woman named Marjorie in 1938 and that she was in love with him. Well, right? go on. So what? Remember what the cablegram said? Well, of course. Congratulations. Reservations changed as requested. Right. Now, why would a hotel manager cable Stokes as congratulations? Why? And why would Stokes want his reservations changed? Well, I don't know. Patsy, think. What's one of the functions of a captain on a ship at sea? One of the... Why, he can marry people. And that's why the congratulations. Now you're and what... catching on. In other words, I believe Captain McIntyre married Marvin Stokes to this Marjorie, whoever she was. But can you and... prove it? Well, I hope I can. And I think the log of the Simon Grenander will bear me out, if we can find it. Uh-huh. Marjorie and Stokes must have separated. We know she didn't come back to America with him. Apparently not. But now after Stokes is dead, this Marjorie suddenly bobs up. Now, who's the one person who'd be most anxious to get rid of her? Uh-huh. You tell me. Well, if Miss Marjorie could have proved that she was Stokes' legal wife, she'd have had a claim to his estate, no matter what kind of a will he left. Why, I get it. Whoever inherited Stokes' property would have had to get rid of her or lose his inheritance. Right. And Thomas Whitaker was the sole heir to Stokes' estate. That's what the will says. Then... Then Whitaker is the murderer. I believe he is. Well, I'll be darned. Of course, it's still just a theory. There's no record of the marriage or the log of the S.S. Grenander, then... Oh, that must be the sergeant now. Nick Carter speaking. It's Matty, Nick. The S.S. Grenander was junked a couple of years ago. What? Don't tell me the log's lost, Matty. No, no. No, I just spoke to the manager of the steamship company that owned it. He says all the ship's papers are stored in the warehouse on Pier 32. Can he get the log for us? Yeah, he says he'll give me the key to the warehouse. 
So I'll pick it up and meet you there, huh? Okay, Matty. Pier 32, right. 15 minutes. <laughs> This young sod was rolling in. I yeah. can't see a darn thing. Hold on to my arm, Patsy. Hey, you're pretty sure Whitaker's our man, huh? Nick? All adds up that way, Matty. Yeah. Of course, I can't swear to it, but I'd certainly... Oh! Back against the wall, quick. Can you see anyone, Nick? No. Fog's too heavy. You got your gun, Matty? Yeah, I got it all right. What am I going to do with it? When you can't see what you're going to... Listen, someone's running toward the end of the dock. Yeah. I can see a shadow. Stop, or I'll shoot! Okay, if that's what you want. Patty, I think you dropped it. Yeah, come on. Do, do you think it's critical, Nick? My theory's right, it should be. He came down here after the log, too. That's the last piece of evidence he had to dispose of. All right. Here he is. You dead, Matty? Oh, blast it, yes. I didn't want to kill him. Oh, crack this fog. Nick, look. What is it, Patty? This isn't Thomas Whitaker. Is what? It? No. No. It's Captain McIntyre's first mate, Al Gunther. Bewildered, Nick, Patsy, and Matty stare down at the body on the dock. Does this mean that Nick's deductions were wrong? That it was Gunther and not Thomas Whitaker who committed the murders? We'll bring you the conclusion of this adventure in just a minute. Now for the conclusion of the case of the nameless blonde. Today's adventure with Nick Carter, brought to you by new post-war old Dutch cleanser. Standing in the ghostly glow of a small electric lantern on a fog-shrouded dock, Nick, Patsy, and Matty stare down at the man who has just died, surprised to learn that it is not, as Nick had predicted, Thomas Whitaker. Nick, this means Whitaker wasn't the killer. It must have been this man, Gunther. That's his right, Nick. Looks like your big theory kind of blew up in your face, didn't it? Maybe, Matty. And then again, maybe not. What? Take a look at Gunther's body. He was shot once in the head. So what? I fired three times, two of my shots missed, one hit him. Sorry, Matty, but all three of yours missed. Oh, now, The bullet that killed Gunther wasn't fired from your gun. What? Now, Nick, your gun is a forty-five police automatic. The wound in his head was obviously made by a gun of a much smaller caliber. Holy smoke, Nick, you're right. Which means that Gunther was the goat for somebody else. He was down here with a murderer. And the murderer killed him, hoping we'd think we'd caught our man. And yes. that means the murderer is still somewhere on this dock. Right, right, Miss Oh, huh? And that's too far away from him. That's Whitaker, Nick. I know his voice. Yeah. Wherever he is, I can't see him because of the darn fog. I can see you plainly, Carter. Under that light. Put your hands up, all three of them. Do as he says. Oh. He's already killed three people to protect his interest in Marvin Stokes' estate. So you figured it all out, did you, Carter? I'm sure you agree that I had no choice once I learned that Marvin was married to Marjorie Lawson. Yes, and once she threatened to prove that fact by hiring me to find either Captain McIntyre, the log, or the Simon Grenander. Precisely. But she made the mistake of paying a call on me before she went to your office. I treated her well. In fact, I gave her a cup of coffee. With arsenic in it. Unfortunately, yes. And then when you heard that McIntyre was going to meet us at the morgue, you ambushed him outside and shot him before he could tell his story. Right again. Just as I'm going to shoot you. I don't think so, Whitaker. You told us to raise our hands, but you forgot to say anything about dropping our gun. Nice work, Nick, shooting out that light. Now we can't see us any better than we can see him. He's trying to get past. There he goes. You can see his silhouette. Stop, Whitaker. Stop for us. Oh. So long. Oh, I had to stay at the hospital while Whitaker made a statement. Oh, well, what'd he say? Everything was pretty much the way we figured it, Patsy. We? Well, you know what I mean. Marjorie Lawson, or Marjorie Stokes, I should say, arrived from London last week. Uh -huh. She'd been living there ever since she left her husband. Well, why did she leave him? Well, from what Whitaker said, they came from different social levels. Stokes was wealthy, and she was a shop girl. Oh. Apparently, after the honeymoon was over, he was ashamed of her. Well, that's a fine thing. Yeah. Uh, why they broke up only a few months after they were married. And that must be why Stokes never mentioned the marriage. Yeah, I suppose so. And the only proof Marjorie had of their marriage was in that ship's log. Hmm? No marriage certificate? No. Whitaker says she told him all her papers were destroyed in the London Blitz during the war. Oh, what a break. Yeah, wasn't it? 
She was probably looking for some kind of proof in Stroke's papers the night she bribed Weber to let her in. Uh Uh-huh. But she didn't find it. So she came to see me. It all makes sense, Nick. Uh, That is except for Gunther. Where did he fit in the picture? Why, you put him in the picture, Patsy. I did? Uh Uh-huh. By your reaction when he said he worked for Whitaker. But... It made him curious. He went straight to Whitaker tonight to find out what it was all about. Uh Uh-huh. And Whitaker persuaded him to help him find the logbook. So it seems. (laughs) But how about Whitaker, Nick? Was he badly hurt? No, Maddie's bullet got him in the right leg. I think he'll be up and around in time to go on the last walk he'll ever take. Well, Nick, what about the adventure new post-war old Dutch cleanser is going to bring us next week? Mike, it's one of my most unusual cases. It's about a man who prayed people to death. Prayed them to death? And did they really die? Oh, I'll say they did. And before it was all over, Mike, this man started praying for Nick to die. Well, I guess a lot of criminals have felt the same way about Nick. Uh, what do you call the story, Nick? I call it The Case of the Salesman of Death. Nick Carter, Master Detective, is presented each week at this time by the Cudahy Packing Company. It is produced and directed by Jock McGregor and is copyrighted by Street and Smith Publications Incorporated. Charlotte Manson is featured as Patsy. Ed Latimer plays Matty. Today's script was written by Ken Pettis and Lou Schofield. Original music is played by Henry Silburn. This program is fictional, and any resemblance to actual persons, living or dead, is purely coincidental. Every ten minutes... Somebody dies of tuberculosis. Yet tuberculosis is curable and can be wiped out. And the sooner it's caught, the quicker and easier the cure. That's why, as a preventive measure, everyone is urged to have his chest x-rayed. Some local tuberculosis, uh, tuberculosis associations and health departments do this free or at very little cost. So check your chest. Get a chest x-ray tomorrow. This is Michael Fitzmaurice saying, when minutes count... Use new post-war old Dutch cleanser. This is the Mutual Broadcasting System. This is Andrea J. Graham, author of the Web Surface series, oh, and a man's wife. You're listening to the Great Detectives of Old Time Radio. Welcome back. Well, definitely a good, solid, challenging mystery for Nick to solve. Uh, By the way, those lost episodes, uh, the case of the black magic murder, the case of the fatal redhead, and the case of the supercharged corpse. Well, we turn now to listener comments from Twitter, and Cynical Omeletier writes... One thing I've learned from listening to your podcast, Nick Carter will get himself out of any cellar people try to kill him in. Well, it's true of not only cellars, but a wide variety of locations. He's the master of putting himself and whoever's with him in harm's way and then getting himself out of the situation. It's a good trick to know, I guess. All right, well, uh, that will do it for today. We'll be back tomorrow with uh, yours truly, Johnny Dollar. Next Thursday, another episode of Nick Carter. In the meantime, send your comments to Box13 at GreatDetectives.net. Follow us on Twitter at Radio Detectives and become one of our friends on